Good morning. Welcome back to episode five of DC2 Integra race car build. Um, last time we left off, we just finished painting the engine bay. That's all dried now. It's turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah, like I said in the last video, the clear coat's a bit thin in some places, but that's all right. Overall, it's a massive improvement over the stock paint in the bay. Um, and for a race car, it's very good to go. Today's focus is suspension. So essentially, the main shell prep is completely finished now. It's time to start assembling everything. So this morning I'll be starting off with rear suspension. Got that all laid out. So rear trailing arms, they've been painted. I've installed the uh, PCI spherical rear trailing arm bushes. Through there. Um, got the honed roll center correction brackets down the bottom. And we've also got the honed strengthening gussets welded in. Welded in. Everything else that's laid out is just all the arms and the suspension itself. Um, PCI spherical lower control arms for the rear. Honed spherical toe control arms uh, with eccentric adjusters. Honed adjustable camber arms for the rear. Um, and these are set up to sort of work with their roll center corrected geometry. So they have these little spaces that correct or that change where the bolts in the car. So we can shift the mounting point up or down and that changes the camber curve. Also, these come with shims, so they come with two shims per side. I'll install one per side. That lets me subtract either one shim or add one shim at the track for quick and easy camera adjustment. So they're like sort of they're half a degree per shim, so it's pretty easy to, to work out what's going on with it. For rear coilovers, we have Shockworks um, single adjustable coilovers, custom spec for the car. So I've taken the spring out of this one here because we'll do mock-up in the car and check uh, tyre clearance and everything um, with no spring so we can get the, the full range of travel and make sure the tyre doesn't hit the body at any place. I'll also do that a bit later on. Um, but yeah, everything's all set up ready to go so I'll start installing pretty soon. The other thing I want to do with this video is kind of illustrate the proper way to set up coilovers. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet some, at, some of which actually comes from the companies themselves, which is pretty disappointing. So it's all about how you adjust ride height versus setting the overall travel. Uh, companies like BC will tell you only adjust this lower mount to adjust ride height. That's completely wrong. Um, this here sets the travel of the suspension in the car. So it sets the upper and lower limits of the, of the wheels travel. And once you've set that, so you've got the droop that you want and the compression that you want, and you can confirm that it's not hitting the body of the car, then that's locked and that stays there. And then you adjust right height using the spring perches uh, and the spring length to make sure that it's capped if we'll use helper springs like in this spot. I've had a good think about why companies do advertise the wrong way of doing it. And I think it's because of the, the generic nature of their mass produced suspension. Uh, they use consistent shock lengths across many different models, consistent spring, spring lengths across many different models. And they set it up so that they install it um, they install a spring with a spring perch to have the right amount of preload that they want and the right amount of, you know, keep the spring captive and then adjust ride height using the bottom mount. But like I just said, that impacts the upper and lower limits of the wheels travel relative to the car and that's not a good thing. So fine for street use, whatever, but on the track, if, you know, if you're in danger of contacting a tyre on the chassis or the body, uh, that could end really badly. So it's really important to set these up properly um, and I'll go through probably step by step of, of, of how that's done. Anyway, let's get on with installing. Alright, so suspension's all in on both sides. So I had to go up filming it, but I just look like a Gumby rolling around on the floor struggling to get bolts in, so no point seeing it. Um, it all did go pretty smoothly. The, uh, I'll try and get under here so we can see. The toe arms are a complete pain to get in. There's like a Behind that bolt just there, uh, there's like a sliding nut inside the chassis. And yeah, it's pretty difficult to get it aligned, but got there in the end. So yeah, toe arms connect up the front. They have fine adjustment on the eccentric and then rough adjustment uh, in the middle with the, the sawtooth, the two halves. Uh, spherical trailing arm bushings straight up into the body. And then the uh, PCIA rear lower arms as well. So everything went in yeah, nice and smooth, like I said. So shock has no spring on it now this whole system should move up and down relatively easily
well it would if the suspension would move um with without the suspension in there that'll just cycle up and down with you know like one finger's worth of lift it's it's actually really good so like you compare that to trying to use uh, rubber bushings they kind of stick especially when they're uptight so spherical bearings have way more free play because they're you know not sort of crushed on the sides holding the center in place like a rubber bushing is uh, but also they're yeah rock solid there's no no compliance in there at all pretty good setup um, what I'll do now is chuck on the rear uh, rear bearing and hub assembly and then the brake disc um, get the wheels on and then we'll start cycling you will do a sort of a bit of a mock-up alignment get it relatively in the ballpark and then just do a bit of cycling to see sort of how close everything gets and whether I can fit these big rear tires in the back of the car all right, so I've got the rear brake disc on and the wheel. Um, first of all, the wheels look amazing. Pretty stoked with how this turned out. Really cool color. Um, needed to use a five mil spacer to clear the inside of the trailing arm. Without that spacer, it's a plus 44 offset wheel, which is quite a high offset. Without that spacer, the tire was just rubbing the trailing arm. Uh, now we've got about five mil gap, so looking good. So what I've done, I'm using a jack. Control arm. up to my intended ride height uh, for this car I want to run 310 millimeters between the center of hub and the lip of the guard uh, to make it sort of more accurate for measuring I actually measure from the bottom of the wheel down here up and then just add on obviously half the diameter of the wheel so the value I'm looking for is 546 millimeters in this case that's where the wheels sitting at the moment um, I've already had to do some clearancing up in here where the bumper like sort of attachment point was so I've chopped all that off and then drilled a hole further back to put a cable tie in. Uh, I've also checked the camber to make sure it was relatively within range and that was yeah, sitting about 1.8 degrees negative camber so fairly conservative for what I end up running but it's a good start for checking tyre clearance uh, because if we ever do need to lean the tyre up a bit more I'll probably run somewhere around two and a half normally. Um, then, then I know I've got the room to do that. So now what I need to do is firstly check droop. So I want to make sure I've got the droop that I'm looking for. Um, I currently have the coilover set to the maximum amount of tra uh, travel pos as possible. So the, the bottom mount on the coilover is wound as far off as I can get it while still having the correct thread engagement at the bottom. Uh, this gives me the, the most amount of droop. These are set, set up with quite short shock canisters, so I think it'll be quite limited for droop, but that's alright. Um, so yeah, we'll me I'll put you on a tripod and we'll measure that up. Right, so this first measurement I'm checking is the right height of the wheel. Uh, it should be set pretty much bang on where I need it. So that's 546 millimeters. That's exactly what I want for the right height. That results in 310 millimeters from the center of the hub up to the lip of the guard. Now what I'm going to do is let the jack completely down so the wheel is at the bottom of its travel. You can hear that that bottomed out. So now we remeasure and we write down the difference. So it was 546 millimeters before, it's now 570 millimeters. So subtracting those two numbers gives you 24, 25 millimeters of droop. That's not much at all, um, but the manufacturer of the suspension, that's what they recommend for a circuit setup. They do recommend more droop for a tarmac rally setup. So I'm kind of going for like a mix between tarmac rally and circuit, but because of the honed um, roll center correction brackets that spaces the lower control arm down more uh, that limits the amount of droop I can get out of the setup without going to a longer shock. So 25 mil is good enough for now. Um, I've got plenty of rear tires at 235. So the inside wheel will likely lift off the ground, which you will commonly see on a lot of track Hondas. Um, but yeah, we'll do some testing and if that's not enough droop and I'm not getting enough rear grip, then I can always add some shock length into it to, to give me a little bit more group, more droop. So that's set, 25 millimeters of droop. Now we want to calculate what the compression is. So I'll lift it back up to a right height and remeasure it again, and then we'll start pushing uh, with a jack, pushing the wheel up into the wheel arch, 
one to see if it hits anything and fouls. Um, there's some bits inside here which I think will get in the way, uh, but two to see how high we can get it and calculate what our, our compression number is. So ideally the ratio of droop to compression is somewhere around like one droop to two compression, uh, but because I've got such limited droop in this setup, it'll likely be like considerably higher number of compression. That's all right, lots of travel is all good, uh, but yeah, we'll see how we go. Yep, still about being on for ride right height. Um, wheel doesn't touch anything, rolls really nicely. Let's check it up and see what we get to. So it's currently not touching anything. We've gone up about 30 millimeters, so it should be heaps more product. But what am I going to hit? I think I've got a touch on the bumper here. Looks like there's a good amount of room up front. And there's a bit of metal on the inside of the bumper too, which I think I'll hit. Yep, so I'm just touching where I clearance the rear bumper mount before. There's not really much further room for me to be able to do that, so what I'm going to do is add some camber and then we'll try again. Okay, so I've added about half a degree or 0.7 a degree of negative camber. Um, we've also used a bit of a hammer and hammered in some of the more sharper spots here. Uh, so hopefully it gives us a bit more clearance. We'll check this up again and see how much higher we can go uh, with the travel. Firstly, I'll just double check we were sitting with um, with the camera at normal ride height. Oops, that's a little bit too low. Yeah, near enough. Cool, so that's right on negative two and a half degrees of camera, which is about where I'm going to run. Toe still looks good at this point. Strap the car up and see where they ends up. So it's still got full rotation. We're getting towards the end of the suspension stroke. Now you can see I'm actually lifting the car off the jack stands entirely. So that's obviously bound up on something. From what I can see in the, I'm not at the top of the suspension stroke just by a little bit. Is that how The sway bar is not connected, so that won't be it. Ah. I believe I've actually hit the wheel arch. See if the tire no longer moves. Yep, so I think I'm touching the top of the wheel arch up in here. It's at about 492 millimetres, so right half is 546. That gives us 52 millimetres of travel. 
Um, not a hell of a lot of travel. The bump droop, droop ratio is actually pretty spot on though. So around 25 millimeters of droop and about 50 millimeters of bump at the wheel. So it's probably about the best we're going to get out of this. Um, but I am a little bit worried about those because the car can, the tire can hit the wheel arch before the suspension sort of bottoms itself out on the bump stop. I want to add some bump stop packers in there so that the, so that the suspension gauges the bump stops before the tire hits the guard. Um, if I'm in a like a corner going full speed, what I don't want to happen is the tire contact the car because that can slow it down quite rapidly, lock it up, uh, but also damage the tire. I'd much rather it came to the end of its travel uh, on the suspension itself. So that's all good, easy fix. A few bump stop packers will seem right. that extra camera there's plenty of clearance for the tyre in there so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And about sourcing for the rear, uh, what I'll do is basically copy this across to the other side so take the length of the shock where I've set it up, transfer that across to the other side um, and that'll be the rear sorted. Actually before I move on I do want to show this uh, without the wheel attached so you can see where the jack is acting on the lower control arm. Um, so what I'm doing is jacking this up sort of emulates the suspension travel with no spring to get in the way. So as we move up, you can see the suspension compressing. And that's about where we got to with the wheel. This, this bump stop acts as a bit of a telltale. You can see uh, there's a little bit of a gap between the top of the travel. The bump stop itself will compress as well. So there's probably another 10 to 15 millimeters of travel at the shock. Uh, but as I said, I'm hitting the inside of the wheel arch with the tyre because it's quite a large tyre. This bottom mount here is wound off as far as it can go. Uh, there's a little telltale in there which shows you thread engagement of the, of the shock body into the bottom mount. So that's yeah, as far down as it can go. Normally in this situation what I would do is because we haven't topped out the shock, I would unwind the bottom further, which lengthen, lengthens the entire assembly. Then that means that this will hit the top sooner because it's longer. You're starting from the same point at the bottom. The top is higher, therefore the top will hit into the bump stop earlier in the uh, travel. That would be the right way to fix it because that would then prevent your tire contact in the body. But like I said, I can't unwind the bottom mount any further without lengthening the shock body or getting some custom shock bodies in there. Um, so where we are at now is I'll put some packers in here to make the bump stop longer effectively and that, that way um, the suspension will, will contact the bump stops before the tyre hits the body. So yeah, don't know if that made any sense at all but that's essentially what I'm doing to set the travel of the shocks. I have no spring, I don't care about ride heights, all I care about is the top and bottom extents of the travel and that's what this bottom mount controls. This does not control ride height at all. When we do get the springs back in the car, setting the spring perch up or down, that'll control the ride height and that'll let us get to that 310 millimetres between centre of hub and, and lip of guard that we were talking about earlier. That's really about it um, for how to set up the shock travel. Your number one sort of concern is making sure that stuff doesn't hit the body and then you're adjusting the shock travel, the ex adjusting the bottom mount up or down um, to move the shocks travel so that you don't hit the body. Fortuitously, this suspension is well set up from the manufacturer, which makes sense because they're custom made and the guys know what they're doing at Shockworks, uh, so that the travel is pretty well set for where it's supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, quite a small amount of travel compared to what I'm used to, but that's a circuit car and that's, that's what they need. Alrighty, uh, moving on to the front pretty soon. Alright, so it's a couple of hours later, um, before I moved on to the front suspension, I just got all the, the brakes sorted and everything squared away. Uh, brakes ended up being a massive pain in the ass. Not really sure why, just the handbrake didn't seem to want to adjust properly, so it was a lot of on and off for the calipers to get that to work. Um, and to get the handbrake brackets to work, you've got to adapt them to, to these calipers, they're from a, a Type R Integra. Um, but got there in the end, that's all squared away and good to go. And I've now laid out all the front suspension ready to go in as well. So 
everything that's factory been given a, a coat of epoxy black and make it no, look all nice and neat um, front uprights I did these quite a while ago so they've got new bearings new drive hubs honed extended front ball joints which are for the the roll center correction um, four arms lower control arms are PCI so they're like sort of bell aluminium they have a little bit of extra caster in them as well um, they match up with a stock sort of back half got PCI spherical um, compliance bushes got home developments upper control arms the camber arms uh, they could, these give you a bit more caster as well and they have a, a sawtooth design so you can see the, the two pieces there slide back and forth on sort of teeth um, that way once they're bolted in they're locked in place that's not going to move a common problem with the standard style of friction joint in the upper control arms like your hard race etc under extreme cornering and curbs that can tend to shift around a bit I've had quite a lot of alignment change from that these are some hard race spherical bearings as well so they'll go in the, the back of the upper control arms and bolt into the chassis suspension shock works uh, same as the rear I've taken the spring out of one of them so I'll set droop and compression travel with that and check all the tyre clearance I have the guards off the car at the moment so we'll check tyre to chassis clearance first get that all set then we'll mock up a guard and figure out uh, just how much we're going to have to space that out to fit the gigantic front tyres okay so front suspension's all in that went nice and smoothly um, you'll notice I've got some washers on the drive hub I don't have my front brakes yet, they're on back order, so I'm just simulating the thickness of the, the front brake disc or the front brake um, rotor hat where it slips over the over the studs um, so that the, the wheel, once we put that on into your clearances, is in the correct position offset wise. So now the suspension's in, uh, don't have the spring in it so I can cycle it up and down pretty easy. I'll check tyre clearances to the chassis itself and then set the bottom mount on the on the shock so that we engage the bump stop before the tire hits the hits the top of the, the wheel well there so we'll do that now okay so I can feel the chassis start to lift up there and we still have tons of room so we're on the bump stop which is why the chassis started to lift up uh, we've still got sort of what looks to be 10-ish millimeters of room so i'll let the car down and take the wheel off um, wind in the shock canister a bit more to give it a bit more um, bump travel and then we'll try that again So compromised through this clearance trying to make sure that it doesn't rub on, on full lock. I might just have to accept that it's going to going to touch at the high lock on the inside when I'm turning that direction. Um, I think I'll wind it back so we just clear on the back side of it and then do some testing of the track and see how bad that really is in real life conditions. I could see it was close to full lock but not properly full lock. Um, it's not often that you end up using full lock under full compression when this drops, well you should never be on full lock under full compression so when this drops down to more sort of normal ride height uh, we'll have a lot more room for that wheel to turn in so I'll reset what a, a bunch of what I just did um, and get set up so we just clean on the back side instead
Something like that. Move that back in. We're touching, but not anywhere near as badly. Worst comes to worst as well. I do have an extra set of lock limiting spaces which I can put in the rack to further reduce the steering lock if it does end up being a, a major issue on track. Heavy with where that sits now. Uh, what I need to do next is get the guard on. Let's kind of figure out where ride height sits um, and check clearance to the guard. The guard's going to need to be spaced out quite a lot. Uh, so then we can set, actually measure and understand the, the bump and droop measurements from ride height. Alrighty, so I've just played around with putting on the front guards and the front bumper. Uh, in the stock position, the guards, the wheels don't fit in there whatsoever, they sort of stick out about 20 mil. What makes this difficult is my intended ride height, due to how big the tyres are, uh, my intended ride height is pretty much tucking tyres straight away anyway. So what I've done to combat that is space out the guards. So it's built up a little space so that pops into the bottom there. That's just a mock-up one, I'll do a proper one out of, out of aluminium later. And I've also lifted the bottom of the guard up, which then bows out the top. Um, so that's made this fit pretty well by the looks of it. You can see there everything's looking pretty nice. I've got the camber set now to about the maximum camber that the upper control arms can give me, which is about negative 3.5 degrees. That's about what I'm looking to run anyway, but I'm going to need to to make it all fit. So now what I'll do is chuck you back on the tripod and start checking wheel clearances again. Um, I had a quick look under there and it's a worryingly small amount of compression travel at the moment so we'll see what we can get out of it maybe we need to clearance it a bit or um, raise the ride height a bit so it's straight away that's come up to full bump we do have clearance to the guards Tell. That's 20 millimeters total of bump travel, which is not acceptable at all. Um, don't quite know what I'm going to do about that actually. Probably the only way to get around it is to increase the ride height. That means I'm starting from a lower start point and I can go up further. So that would give me probably 40 mil of um, 40 millimeters of compression travel. Still not fantastic but you can only work what we deal with. This is what happens when you run such massive tyres on the car. The bump stop is uncompressed as well. That can probably compress to another 10-ish millimetres of, of um, compression travel. Uh, but yeah, I think what I'll do now is, is change the ride height. All right, so I've had another play around. Um, I've added in the additional lock limiting spaces to further reduce the steering lock. Uh, I recentered the rack to make sure that the steering rack had the same amount of travel in both directions and I've lowered the ride height a little bit. So now I'm at, um, at full compression, got heaps of clearance when the wheel's straight. 
for wok turning right. That's just rubbing on the inside. And it full lock in the other direction. It's also just rubbing on the inside of the chassis rail. I'm pretty happy with how that sits. Um, I would like a lot more vertical travel, but I just can't achieve that. Um, I might be able to go like up a tiny bit further, but again, it just limits what you can do under, under high steering load. Um, guard clearance is, is all good. All I need to do is adjust how that attaches at the bottom to change how the guard bows out. I think it's all the clearance that I need. So that's pretty well it um, in terms of the measurements. So that's 530 millimeters. I've dropped down the jack. That's 630 millimeters. So that's 100 mil of travel um, and approximately 35 to 40 of that is compression and the rest is droop. So. Not fantastic, but we're very limited by the tire size that we're running. When I do swap over to the Advan AO 50s on the front, which is what I have on the rear, uh, these curvos are just here for testing. These have a really like really angular fat sidewall on them, whereas the Advan's kind of roll over a lot more. So I'll have more room with the Advan's and I think I can get away with a bit more compression travel on that. But we'll wait till we have those tires to actually do the testing and figure out what we can get out of it. That's pretty much it for the front suspension. What I'm going to do now is reinstall the spring for this, um, copy everything across to the other side, and then get it down on the ground so we can have a look at what it looks like. And there it is on the ground. Um, played it around with the left hand side, got that all matched up to the right, set the rod heights for the front and rear suspension, and we're back on the ground. I made up some different guard spaces um, to get the bow of the front guards working a little bit better. It's given me quite a lot of clearance now. Mind you, I still don't, I don't have the brake rotors on, so the wheels will stay out, stick out another five or so mil, but it's pretty much perfect as it sits. Really stoked with how this is sitting. It looks awesome. Very, very happy. Can't wait to see it all done. Hopefully the colour of the wheels is popping in the sun there. It's, um, yeah, really bright, really deep in real life. Very very happy with how this has all turned out. I think the colours all go really well together. Glad I went for the, the grey interior rather than a white or a, or a darker colour. It pops off quite good. looks pretty sweet in the sun as well. You can really see the, the flake and the colours coming through. Still shitloads of work to do as you can imagine. It's still just a shell of a car but now it happens to be one that rolls around. Uh, so yeah, plenty more to come but that'll wrap it up for this episode. I think I'll just sit back and enjoy this for a while. Thanks for watching. See you later.